Human-computer interaction as a discipline is about the way that we, as humans, interact with technologies. And the technology that I like to study is board games. In human-computer interaction, we study the way that people interact with technologies with a view to making technologies better, but also to making better technologies. So to making sure that we have tools that work the way that we want them to work and that do the things that we want them to do. If you've noticed perhaps that your car has changes in its dashboard, that your phone does things that you particularly like, that a computer system is particularly easy to use, these things often come out of our understanding of the way that people and technologies interact. So board games as a form of entertainment, as a form of cultural product, date back over 5,000 years. We know that people were playing Senate more than 3,000 years ago. Um, we know that games like Backgammon and Nine Men's Morris were played in the Roman Empire. And in fact, the Romans really spread Nine Man's Morris through the space of their empire so that when we look at medieval cathedrals that were built in the United Kingdom, we often find remnants of Nine Men's Morris boards that have been scratched into the stonework by the workers there. And these are games that we call abstract games. They're games that don't have a particularly strong story associated with them. Um, it's more about this is the way that you're allowed to move these pieces. We know, for example, as well, that games were often associated with gambling. So we find old dice, old bones, old betting chips um, in archaeological digs. Now, there are four things in my research that I find people talk about consistently when they talk about why they like games. One of them is the sociality. It's very hard to sit around a table with people and not interact with them. So playing games is always social, but perhaps playing board games is particularly social. You're talking to people, you're negotiating with them, you're discussing how you interpret perhaps a particular rule or what you expect to happen in the game, or you're making sure that, you know, not everybody is ganging up on the same side if you're playing a game where, um, where there's an element of teamwork. So games then become a kind of a way to facilitate interactions. They're a way, they're a technology that allows us to interact with other people. And this is true, you know, of digital games as well as of physical games. But what we also see happening a lot is uh, the development of games where part of the actual gameplay is the way that we interact with other people, perhaps the way that we solve a problem cooperatively. So games like the Exit series or the Unlock series have us actually interacting together as a team and working as a team to solve a problem. We win or lose as a group against the game. Playing a game isn't something that you just sit back and let happen, right? It's something that you engage with very actively, that you think about, um, that you react to. If you're playing a card game, you might sort your cards in a particular order. If you're playing Monopoly, you might tuck that big 500 pound note, or however big it is now, under a corner of the board, just in case you need it later. It's a bit like having an emergency 20 inside your wallet, you know, but the way that we use the pieces to plan for eventualities, to plan for what we want to do. Board games are made of stuff. Right? They're made of cardboard, they're made of wood and plastic and resin, and they can be beautiful to look at, they can be beautiful to touch. Um, I interviewed someone who talked about the sensuality of the pieces, of the feel of the pieces. And so we have things, things like these, you know, little resin counters that you can use in a game. And you can hear the noise that they make when I throw them from hand to hand or when I put them on the table. When some of my colleagues interviewed people, about dice and games where people were rolling tens if if not kind of hundreds of dice at one time they found that 
people almost universally rejected the use of a die rolling app because they wanted that feel of dice bouncing across the table and landing on the table. The last thing that people talk about is variety. I've got 1300 games here, but you don't need that many to have a good variety of games. Um, so people talk about choosing the right game for their mood or choosing the right game for the right group of people. Are you playing with adults? Are you playing with children? Does somebody have particular interests? Is somebody colorblind? Um, these are all factors that might influence what game you're going to choose. And of course, how many of you are there and how long do you want to spend playing a game? Why do we play board games? Well, I've talked about those four factors, right? Giving you something physical, something beautiful that you can touch, spending time with people, thinking, picking the right game for the right moment. Um, they all contribute to the quality of, of that time that we're spending with other people and of the experience that we're having. And this comes back, I suppose, to human computer interaction, right? And the sorts of interactions that we have as people while we're using a technology.